This is a, a brief course on compassion that we've um, putting out for free into the world because we want people to benefit from this in a, in a good way. And so I'm going to go into different elements around compassion and what compassion is and then finish with a breath-based compassion practice which I find very powerful and very beautiful and has certainly helped lots of people so far. So I have no idea what you think compassion is or why you've tuned into this course. All right? But I think you know, living the living nature of compassion is really, really important. So I'm going to start with understanding the word compassion in terms of a, uh, a Western sense of it from etymology a little bit. And we have three related terms, sympathy, empathy and compassion. Now sympathy is a really interesting word because it means to feel with. Pathos is to, to have to feel alongside or to feel with. Yeah? Um, it can also mean to suffer with. Yeah? So sympathy can mean to suffer with. But sympathy is generally understood to be a way that somebody in a slightly superior place is looking down on sympathy of somebody else. I have sympathy for that. Yeah? So it's often related to positioning where there's a position of inequality. So one person is feeling sympathy for somebody else who's in a lower position. It's a kind of pity. So that's not a practice that we want to cultivate in that sense. Empathy, however, is an equality of positioning where we feel somebody else's situation very fully. So, for example, with empathy, we might feel we might feel that somebody is, uh, you know, hurting, and and we feel that pain with them. You know, our mirror neurons match their mirror neurons and we feel that person together. We feel fully where they're at, whether it's joy, sadness, gladness, distress, or whatever their experience is. And we can feel that because that human capacity to be fully in our mirror neurons and feel another human being you know, is a really important part of how we are as human beings. And that, I feel, is empathy. Compassion is a different thing. Now, compassion from a Western sense simply means to suffer with. And of course, in a uh, uh, more Asian sense from the origins of compassion-based practice, the words are rather different and we don't find the word compassion, but that's the Western word we have. But the meaning of compassion is substantially different because it doesn't mean to suffer with. What it means is to rest in center. To rest in center yeah, in an equanimous way and yet fully feel everything that's happening and to act in ways that make a difference yeah, not because you're trying to fix something yeah, but because it's an appropriate action in that moment. Yeah. It gives access to a point of leverage from which transition and transformation can occur. But you're resting in centre. So first you have to be in centre. You have to understand what centre is, what equanimous centre is, which is not a place of unfeeling, it's a place of deep feeling. You have to have access to all the possible domains of your feeling world yeah, and have worked with experiencing those and exploring those and transforming those yeah, so that you can be comfortable with everybody else's feeling world. So you can be in centre. So I'm going to talk about a few uh, Sanskrit words as well. One of the Sanskrit words for um, a kind of compassionate approach to life is metta. Metta. M-E-T-T-A. -T -T metta. Which means acceptance. Radical acceptance and non-aversion. So we're not being, we're not pulling away or withdrawing from anything. It's a deep, radical acceptance of what's happening. It's a benevolence. You know? It's a wish. It's a heartfelt wish for goodness for all beings everywhere. That's metta. There are practices where people cultivate metta. So in certain Buddhist schools, people will cultivate metta as a heart-based yeah, practice of compassion. And it's really crucial. If we look back into the yoga diaspora, 
we find 4,500 years ago a chant called the Shantipat, and part of that is Lokaha Samastaha Sukinu Bhavantu. Lokaha, in all the possible realms of, of, of life, of how people live, of where beings can live anywhere. Yeah, Lokaha, Samastaha, equally and without exception. Sukinu, may they find goodness, auspiciousness, beauty, joy, love, peace and happiness. Yeah, that's what Sukha is. Sukinu, that ease, that effortlessness, that delight, that joy. So may all beings find this. And we find this roots of the practice of metta, of good wishing, well wishing for all beings everywhere, to be a deep and integral part of the yogic path where at the culmination of a practice, a formal practice space, that energy is sent out into the world for the benefit of all beings. Lokaha, Samastaha, Sukhinu, Bhavantu. And this is metta. Another word we find that represents uh, compassion is karuna. Karuna. And karuna means uh, deep empathy compassionate concern for others, it's care, yeah? it's seeking the well-being of the others, it's an active word, seeking the well-being of others. And again, that's not coming from a dysfunction of our own where we desperately need to fix things for other people so we feel good. Yeah? That kind of concern is not in karuna. Yeah? The karuna comes from a place of one's own well-being. You feel good, you feel centered, you're strong, you know you're powerful and you engage from that place to enable the well-being of others. And this is compassion in action, karuna. Another really interesting word in the uh, Sanskrit uh, lexicon is prema. And prema is a divine compassion, divine love, which means the totality, the whole universe and beyond. Yeah, what created it, what brings it into play, what ends it, what's afterwards, what pre predates, what antecedes it. The whole universe, yes, in its dance of creative power in this moment and in all moments, yeah, is at its deep root benevolence. And that's impossible to understand from the space of being a separate nervous system with its fears and its terrors and its fear. So it requires a space of expanding open yeah, in meditative depth, yeah, where we begin to understand yeah, more fully the joined upness of everything. And prema is the capacity to live from that place of deeply understanding the deep order of everything. Yeah? So prema is not about living and dying. Yeah? Death, from the viewpoint of prema, is not a fearful, terrible thing. Yeah? Neither are difficult nervous system sensations. Pain, suffering. Yeah. Prema is that vast, expansive holding of the whole of space-time yeah, in the hands of benevolence. That's what prema means. Another word we find in the Sanskrit and uh, Pali lexicon of words that relate to compassion and compassionate understanding is mudita. Now, mudita is an interesting one because mudita is a celebratory joy at the gladness, the goodness, the success of others. So somebody else has something really good in their life and you spontaneously and automatically feel good about that yourself. That's great. It doesn't have that moment of schadenfreude where you go, oh, I didn't want that to happen to you. I wanted that. There's not that moment of schadenfreude and envy in it at all. That's not mudita. Mudita is the spontaneous celebration of goodness with others. There's a word, interestingly, that's come out of the polyamorous world, which I really like, uh, which is compersion. Compersion is the celebration of the joy of others. So it's interesting that these different worlds, uh, Buddhist world and the, the world of polyamory, yeah? uh, by the way, I'm not a Buddhist, neither are, neither am I polyamorous, but I'm just celebrating these terms. All right. Um, these terms, compersion, means that if somebody's having a really beautiful time with somebody else, you can celebrate that. It's the end of jealousy. Jealousy is no longer seen as valuable, yeah? because jealousy is based in lack. Jealousy is based in uh, hatred and dislike of another. Yeah? So in that, in that world, they have the word compersion. 
In the Buddhist world, they have the word mudita, which means that spontaneous, naturally arising, celebratory joy in the well-being, goodness and success of others. That's wonderful. That's mudita. Another Sanskrit word is upekka, okay, which means equanimity in the face of chaos. It's calm, centered equanimity in the midst of chaos. So it's like being the center of a tornado. Yeah? And we can land in that center, yeah? land in that and be in that and live from that place. And that is the center from which compassion can realistically occur. That is Ubeka. Another interesting Sanskrit word is Ubaya, which means skillful means. Yeah? So we act not out of compulsion, not because we're trying to fix something for somebody else, but out of skillful means. We understand the leverage, the strategy of what most serves that moment for an individual for their development and growth and well-being. And we can act in that way whilst we remain in centre, while we remain equanimous and calm and clear. That's upaya. So we've got a range of Sanskrit words here that we've looked at. And those words are all different elements or aspects of a broad vision of what compassion really is. Yeah. So compassion is not suffering with somebody else, as um, some Western views on compassion have. It's not like that. Yeah. That's like somebody falling off a boat in the Atlantic without a life raft um, or without a life belt and you jump in after them and you don't have a life belt and you drown as well. That's not compassion, that's stupidity. Yeah? So compassion is staying on the boat and throwing somebody a life belt and making sure they can get into it and then pulling them out of the water. That's what compassion is. So if somebody's hungry, compassion isn't that you starve to death, compassion is that you share what you have. So compassion is acting, yeah? it's behavioural, it's acting, but it's not suffering with somebody, it's not jumping into that place of great difficulty with them. You can be alongside them, but be in centre with them at the same time. And that's compassion. Compassion is listening. It's really being there with somebody else. And it's listening with the whole of you to who they are and what they are and what they're saying. So your body is listening to their body. Your heart is listening to their heart. Your mind is listening to them. You know, so many people don't listen. So many people are so busy building their answer, their response and their self-narrative that they don't really have time to pay attention to what somebody else is actually saying. So when we come into the breath and just calm the breath, gentle and be in the breath and be in center, then compassion is heart listening. It's listening fully and completely to what somebody else says. It's listening fully and completely to their narratives and their meanings. Even if, they're even if you think they're deluded, you listen to their narratives and their meanings with curiosity. Yeah? And from that place, resting in your center, yeah, with heart listening, all right, you can then connect with the potentiality of them feeling at peace in that listening. And that's compassion. Compassion remains undistracted. It's effortless. From the place of wisdom, from the place of seeing how beings are scared, yeah, you know, living as a separate self thing in the face of a vast universe is terrifying. Of course we're going to do uh, emotional closure of course we're going to do dubious dissociation and difficult behaviours because we're scared. Yeah? You know, from the, the way the biology works to create the self story, yeah, which I've got to get mine and forget about them, and you know, it's all a fight and a worry and a concern, that kind of way of living, of course, is going to lead to suffering. So when we see people behaving from that place and we know that that's what happens when people sadly have not done enough depth practice to liberate that selfing and see it for what it is yeah to understand themselves as inseparable with the weave of the universe then suffering is going to happen suffering and difficulty and pain is going to happen now from this uh, vision of a whole joined up 
uh, universe, multiverse even, yeah, then suffering is an option. But from the place of suffering it isn't. Suffering is what's happening. So we can't be uncompassionate to somebody in their suffering because we're adding suffering onto suffering. Yeah? Compassion ultimately is deep heart listening. Not from the place of selfing and trying to find our answer, but it's trying to, but it's listening from the heart, from the body, from the deep center of our experiencing. Yeah, being able to communicate from that essence. Yeah, the place for somebody else to relax into essence themselves. So ultimately, it's the communication of dharma. It's the communication of that deep, essential nature of what and who we are, which is the ultimate compassion. Compassion is rejoicing. Compassion is a celebration. It's a celebration of the good, a celebration of the good that has been done. Yeah? The thing about suffering in the world is there are so many people suffering and there are so many people overcoming suffering as well. Yeah? That's to be celebrated. The fact that all those people in that deep, deep, deep pickle of trouble that they're in find a way through and that's to be celebrated. Celebrate the good wherever it occurs. Breathe in the good. Celebrate it. Yeah? It's not just a celebration of the good that has happened, it's a celebration of the good that is happening right in this moment. And there are thousands and millions of people being really nice to each other right now in the universe. Despite what the newspapers say, despite what the social media says, there are millions of people being really beautiful with each other, doing the best they can right now, and that is to be celebrated. That's compassion. And it's compassion for the future, for all the goodness that will happen, and encouraging that goodness, inviting that goodness, celebrating that positivity, that natural optimism that arises when we understand that compassion is an evolutionary strategy for humanity. Compassion is where we're headed, yeah? And we will grow in compassion as we grow as a species. This is what compassion is. Isn't that wonderful? And a little quote from Buddha before we go into the uh, practical, uh, compassion-based practice is simple. You yourself, as much as any being anywhere in the universe, deserve love, appreciation and compassion. You yourself, you yourself, as much as any being anywhere in this multiverse yeah, deserve goodness, love, appreciation, kindness, compassion. And that's where we begin the practical aspects of the compassion meditation from. And that's a quotation, it's a, it's a precy, but it's a quotation from the Buddha which I've changed very slightly, but you get the idea. All right, so we're going to begin our practice from that base. Awesome. Compassion remains undistracted. It's effortless. From the place of wisdom, from the place of seeing how beings are scared, yeah, you know, living as a separate self thing in the face of a vast universe is terrifying. Of course we're going to do uh, emotional closure. Of course we're going to do dubious dissociation and difficult behaviours because we're scared. Yeah? You know, from the, the way the biology works to create the self story, yeah, which I've got to get mine and forget about them, and you know, it's all a fight and a worry and a concern, that kind of way of living, of course, is going to lead to suffering. So when we see people behaving from that place, and we know that that's what happens when people, sadly, have not done enough depth practice to liberate that self thing and see it for what it is, yeah, to understand themselves as inseparable with the weave of the universe, then suffering is going to happen. Suffering and difficulty and pain is going to happen. Now from this uh, vision of a whole joined up uh, universe, multiverse even, yeah, then suffering is an option. But from the place of suffering it isn't. Suffering is what's happening. So we can't be uncompassionate to somebody in their suffering because we're adding suffering onto suffering. Yeah. Compassion ultimately is deep heart listening, not from the place of selfing and trying to find our answer, but it's trying to, but it's listening from the heart, from the body, from the deep center of our experiencing. Yeah, being able to communicate from that essence. Yeah, the place for somebody else to relax into essence themselves. 
So ultimately it's the communication of Dharma. It's the communication of that deep essential nature of what and who we are, which is the ultimate compassion. Compassion is rejoicing. Compassion is a celebration. It's a celebration of the good, a celebration of the good that has been done. Yeah? The thing about suffering in the world is there are so many people suffering and there are so many people overcoming suffering as well. Yeah? That's to be celebrated. The fact that all those people in that deep, deep, deep pickle of trouble that they're in find a way through and that's to be celebrated. Celebrate the good wherever it occurs. Breathe in the good. Celebrate it. Yeah? It's not just a celebration of the good that has happened, it's a celebration of the good that is happening right in this moment. And there are thousands and millions of people being really nice to each other right now in the universe. Despite what the newspapers say, despite what the social media says, there are millions of people being really beautiful with each other, doing the best they can right now, and that is to be celebrated. That's compassion. And it's compassion for the future, for all the goodness that will happen, and encouraging that goodness, inviting that goodness, celebrating that positivity, that natural optimism that arises when we understand that compassion is an evolutionary strategy for humanity. Compassion is where we're headed, yeah? And we will grow in compassion as we grow as a species. This is what compassion is. Isn't that wonderful? And a little quote from Buddha before we go into the uh, practical, uh, compassion-based practice is simple. You yourself, as much as any being anywhere in the universe, deserve love, appreciation and compassion. And that's where we begin the practical aspects of the compassion meditation from. All right, so we're going to begin our practice from that base. Awesome.